Hi, my name is Mark Sun. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to extend this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, November 12th, a famous day in history. Um, we sing here at Northfield from the songbook entitled Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, you may not have that book, but if you wish to sing along with us, I will give you the name of the song, so you could either Google it, or if you have a different book, uh, you can turn to that book and sing along. The first song that we'll sing this evening is number 771, Lord, Speak to Me. Lord, Speak to Me. <clears throat> Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tongue. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost and lone. O oh, strengthen me that while I stand firm on the rock and strong in thee, I may stretch out a loving hand to wrestlers with the troubled sea. Oh, teach me, Lord, that I may teach the precious things Thou dost impart. Wing my words that they may reach the hidden depths of many a heart. Oh, fill me with thy fullness, Lord, until thou dost me overflow in kindling thought and glowing dear. Thy love to tell, thy praise to show. The next song is a very short song. It's number 156. It is entitled Beautiful. 156, Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, Jesus is beautiful, and Jesus makes beautiful things of my life, carefully touching me. Causing my eyes to see that Jesus makes beautiful things of my life. And before we partake of the Lord's Supper, we'll sing number 335 in memory of the Savior's love. 335 in memory of the Savior's love. <clears throat> in memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast, where every humble, contrite heart is made a welcome guest. 
By faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. The cup in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath this banner, thus we sing the wonders of his love. And here anticipate by faith the heavenly feast of The New Testament tells us that we are to gather together on the first day of the week. That's what Christians are to do. And part of gathering together on the first day of the week is remembering the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So part of every worship service on the first day of the week is uh, for us to uh, remember through the Holy Supper of the Lord, the body that Jesus gave for us, the blood that he shed for us. And with that, uh, we uh, come hopefully to understand the Lord's divine plan that while we were sinners, he sent Jesus to us. We know that through the cross and through what happened at the cross, that we are able to have our sins forgiven, that we are able to remember that Jesus sacrificed himself for that very, very purpose. And so as we gather, let's keep those things in our hearts and in our minds. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that uh, your son came down from your right side, that he came down in the form of a human, that he felt all the things that humans felt. And with that, uh, he uh, began a new covenant. The new covenant was that uh, which was started at his death and with his death on the cross let us remember his body which he sacrificed for each one of us as we partake of this bread help us to remember his body on the cross we pray this in his most holy name amen We know that the blood is the part of the body uh, that carries things to it and enables us to live. Jesus shed his innocent blood. He shed his innocent blood that it will be the blood of our salvation, that it will be the blood of our forgiveness, that grace will come over us because Jesus shed his innocent blood. Let's pray for the cup. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the blood that was shed on Calvary. We're grateful that our sins can be forgiven because his blood washes them away. As we partake, let's keep that at the forefront of our minds and understand that his grace can only come upon us. Our redemption can only take place because of that blood that was shed. Help us to partake of this worthily we pray it in his most holy name. Amen. We are also instructed that on the first day of the week, we will lay by and store that which we have prospered and give it back to the Lord. Uh, in the first century, they laid these funds at the feet of the apostles. Uh, today, uh, in our New Testament church, we uh, store this money so that it can be used to evangelize, so it can be used to help those who are in need. Help us to understand that giving is such an integral part of our life. We know that the Lord loves a cheerful giver, 
and he knows that we are to give according to our means. Help us all to give with the understanding that we have been blessed so richly and we return to our Lord that which is his own. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we have both the attitude to want to give and the ability to, to give. Help us in our giving that we would do so indeed with a cheerful heart, that we would do so in realizing that these funds will be used to further your work. Uh, when we are instructed to go preach the word to all the world, we know that uh, this often takes funds on our part to enable us to do that. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing is one of my favorites, number 770, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. <clears throat> Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful mind in pure lives. Thy service find in deeper reverence, praise. <coughs> Simple trust like theirs who heard beside the Syrian sea. The gracious calling of the Lord, let us like them without a word rise up and follow thee. Oh, rest by Galilee. All come of hills above, where Jesus now to share with thee the silence of eternity interpreted by love. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. That concludes our song service. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to participate with us. And uh, I know the Lord was glorified in our praise of his holy name. And I uh, just uh, pray that uh, we were all uplifted as we sang praises to the Lord. If you were there this morning, you heard that the title of my lesson this evening would be uh, Walk in Wisdom. Walk in Wisdom. The scripture uh, segment for this lesson is in the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. I'll give you time to turn to that either in your Bibles or on your devices. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 21. Ephesians 5, 15 to 21. I'll give you a moment or two to get there.
All right, let me read the text. Now remember, the title of this lesson is Walk in Wisdom. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. And be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. A wonderful segment of verses. Look carefully how you walk. That is the basis of our lesson. Now, I, I hope and that I assume correctly that when we talk about our walk, it's not something that we go outside and do for exercise or to get from one place to another. It is our life here on earth. That is our walk. And so uh, the title, I think, is befitting. It's befitting because our Christian walk is to be a special one. We are to get up each day of our lives and realize that we are on our Christian walk. And we are called upon to uh, walk this walk wisely, to walk this walk with wisdom. It, it's kind of elementary to say this, and maybe it's even so simple that you're wondering why in the world would I would talk about this. But it is critical. It, if, if one desires to arrive at the right destination, a person must know the correct route. <laughs> Uh, if I would have preached this lesson 20 years ago, no one would have known what a GPS was. You remember those old days when uh, we had the atlases and the book of maps and uh, to get somewhere a fair, fair distance away, we would follow the lines on the maps and take the proper highways. And now we just punch a couple of numbers into our GPS and we come up with the root. We need to know the root. That's our walk. Our walk is to somewhere. It is to somewhere that we desire to be, just as when we go out and we travel somewhere. Our root is the way that we get to the place we want to get to. Uh, uh, pilots, when they fly airplanes, uh, are told, and, uh, and it's a part of what they do, is to designate a flight plan. We, we know that. We know that he has to have that flight plan. Every once in a while, if you have flown, the pilot will come on and tell you that they have to deviate a little bit. They have to fly at a higher altitude or because of some weather that is bad, they have to go around that particular weather. But it is within mind that they are trying to get to their destination. Have you ever watched in a circus a tightrope walker? It might be almost funny to understand this, but the tightrope walker has to know his route. It is on that wire. And he has to know where he is getting to. 
It's, it's the other side. And so we are to walk according to the knowledge of where we want to get to. And our walk is that <clears throat> way that we live. Our godly lives constitutes the walk. And the Apostle Paul tells us to walk in wisdom. To walk in wisdom. And so, here in the book of Ephesians, in the fifth chapter, he, uh, through the Holy Spirit guiding his pen, tells us to walk wisely. Why? Because God is calling us to go down the correct route. And he's calling us to do so with wisdom. If we look at verse 16, uh, and I'm going to kind of parse this a little bit. In verse 16, it says, walk wise, we walk wisely when we redeem our time. It, it is so important for all of us as Christians to understand what God desires out of his people. And to walk wisely tells us that our time here on earth is limited. We don't know when our time will be done. We don't know how many times we will, uh, we will, uh, navigate about the sun. One revolution is called a year. And so we don't know how many years that we have. Everyone has a beginning to their time and everybody has an end. That beginning was at our conception. And if we speak of it biblically, the beginning of our Christian lives happened when we obeyed God into salvation. Uh, there is a possibility that before we die, Jesus will come again. God calls us to redeem that time because it's all that we have. We wake up in the morning and we have an amount of time. And what we do with that time determines whether we are walking in wisdom. It means to examine the hours and the days and the years the Lord has given us. And then perhaps asking ourselves the question, are we using our time for all that it's worth? Now, the Lord didn't tell us that we weren't to rest. The Lord didn't tell us that we were not to work, to make money, to feed our families. You know, there, there are certain aspects of our time that we are uh, to utilize uh, for the things that life is made out of. On the first day of the week, we're to gather as a church and worship the Lord using our time wisely, looking forward to that time that we meet together. In verse 17, it says that we walk wisely when we receive the word of God. That's what verse 17. How can we understand the will of God if we don't know what his word tells us that his will for us is? Now, you know what? We can read a part of our Bible every day. I know people who have said, I want to read the Bible this year. And, and that's so very, very important. But our reading must go deeper than that. Given that uh, we are wise, it means going deeper into the Word. We have those wonderful Bereans that were remembered because Paul uh, just uh, singles them out and said that they were more noble 
because they didn't just accept the word that was preached to them, but they delved into it to know that the words that were taught by the apostles were taught in the way that it was supposed to be taught. We gather together in the word of God. And every time we read his word, we get the chance to become wiser because we walk in wisdom. We walk according to verses 18 through 20. It says, and do not get drunk with wine for that is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit. We should walk with the Holy Spirit within us. He, Paul makes this kind of interesting comparison uh, by, he compares rejoicing in the Holy Spirit with being drunk with wine, which is dissipation. Now, he may not mean exactly that. People can get drunk with wine without drinking wine. We live di lives of dissipation when we waste the time that God has given to us instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to live in our lives. We, we allow the Spirit to guide our lives so that we can open ourselves to the Lord. What we completely understand is that nothing is hidden from God. God knows everything. We, we go back to the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve attempted to hide from God. And that has rung down through time. God knows everything that we do. You know, it's not like that, you know, if a tree falls in the forest and there's nobody there, does it make a sound aspect? Uh, it does not mean if I do something wrong and I don't get caught, it's okay because I didn't get caught. God knows and we are to walk wisely in the spirit of the Lord. And with that, we know that the, the devil roars about like a lion. And, and he's there to try to tempt us to do things that we should not do. The devil goes after Christians. He's got the evil people already. He's trying to get the Christians to do wrong. And we must walk so very, very wisely in the Lord. And as we uh, go just a little bit further in verse 21, it says, and be subject to one another in the fear of the Lord. Uh, verse 20 says, always giving thanks in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God. How do we do that? It's, it's I believe, how we relate to one another. We relate to one another in humility. Paul says to submit ourselves to one another. Submit means to humble ourselves. Thus, Paul is calling the Ephesians to humble themselves before one another. Pride leads to acrimony. Pride takes that acrimony and it leads ultimately to division within the church. And we are called to be united in the church. Humility brings to the table uh, peace and unity. And so how do we do that? Well, we humble ourselves before others out of respect for Jesus Christ. Jesus humbled himself to die on the cross. He humbled himself. And the call for us is to imitate our Lord Jesus. 
Why? Because he walked in the wisdom of the Lord. To walk this way, I believe, requires following Jesus Christ. And we do that by following him in literal Christian meditation. We must take time out of our lives to meditate on the things that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord, that God indeed sent him to us while we were yet sinners, that he died for us, that we might be saved. And with that, we must walk in wisdom. We must walk in the wisdom of the Lord. We must meditate as the first Psalm says on his word day and night. That's what the wise did. The wise man of the first Psalm, you know, in his word, I meditated day and night. There's no time like the present to get into the word. That's where we started, wasn't it? In verse 17, he called on them to understand the word of God. And that's what we are to do. And so <clears throat> as we as we complete this lesson, we complete it with the idea that we are to walk wisely. We started our walk when we became children of the Lord, when we decided our lives were not uh, working the way they should have, that we needed a change. And as we heard and believed the message of the Holy Spirit inspired word of God, we said, I must obey God into salvation. I must confess that his son, Jesus Christ, is indeed the son of God, the father. I must say, I'm going to put things behind me that I don't need to have in my life. And finally, that's called repentance. And finally, I will submit to him in baptism. That's what the Great Commission said. Go preach the word to all the world, baptizing them, them into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. If you have not taken that step this evening, if you have not become a child of God, this is our invitation to do so. If you need to, please respond. We will uh, be at your call if you need us. I just pray that all of us will be better for this lesson. Uh, let's pray together. Our God, Heavenly Father, we know that we only have one walk. We only have that walk that is with you as Christians, as your children. Help us to walk indeed wisely as Paul tells us to do. Help us to walk in the word. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to walk so that we know where we're going, that we understand that we want to live with you forever. Bless us in our Christian walk. Help us to love and encourage one another to uh, love and good deeds as we are instructed. Be with us and help us to comfort others. Help us to uh, uplift one another. Uh, as we are on that same walk together, desiring to get to the same destination. Continue to be with us. Continue to bless us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all.